Hey y'all! Welcome to episode two of Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. That would be me. So now that we are into multiple episodes, I'm going to be creating a playlist for each of my Create This Book series, series, series. You'll be able to find the playlist link in the description of this video, as well as any future Create This Book videos. And speaking of future videos, if you wanna subscribe, now would be the time to do that so you can be notified of those videos as I post them, which will be every week. Every Sunday to be specific, although I'm not holding myself to that, but that's the plan. Okay. So we have made it through our intro pages, most of which followed some sort of a theme. So I'm actually excited to be getting into like the real prompts where I can use a little bit more creativity. We have four of those prompts to tackle today. So enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. Okay, first prompt for the week. Create a monochrome. Choose one color, use only that color to decorate this page. I'm working on a page outside of the book so I can use my watercolors. The color I will be using for my monochrome is green and I will be painting a praying mantis. I know I've been using a lot of green in this book so far and it might come across that it's my favorite color. Well, it's not. My favorite color is actually red. But when I thought about a monochrome where the background color needs to match the subject, I immediately felt like an insect would be perfect, green and green. And the praying mantis is so fascinating. I mean, any female who decapitates her mate has my interest. <laughs> Sorry, I know I can be a little macabre and my art gets a teensy bit dark sometimes, but that's just me. Yakety yak, back to the art. As you can see, I've laid down most of the shadows and the base color with several different shades of green watercolor. Now I'm just going in with my colored pencils to punch up the color in some areas, smooth some of those color blends, and refine all of those itty bitty details. Time for some juicy highlights, which means the highlight song. And now to finish, I'm using my fine liner. Now I did not fully line the entire image. I left a few line breaks here and there, which I don't know, it almost gives it like a graphic novel feel as opposed to the more cartoony look that I thought I might get if I had a full thick outline over everything. And now to cut her out and Mod Podge her, gently of course, as Mod Podge is water-based and can reactivate and therefore smear watercolor. Gluing her into the book. We need something here. Ah, she needs a name. How about Marla? Marla the Mantis. I took inspiration from the graphic novel vibe she was giving me and decided to do big, bold block lettering for her name. And for contrast, I used a cute little script to write The Mantis. Background's looking a little bare. Let's add a little more detail. Time for a little chop chop. And Mod Podge. Into the book we go. And as per the rule I created for myself in the beginning of the book, I needed to sign and date the page. Here's the finished product. I love this just so much. Little Marla looks absolutely divine and oh so ready to meet a man. Mantis. Prompt number two. Create the following lists. Things you like and things you dislike. First off, I don't know why, but this little list icon bothers me. We're going to cover that. What is this? I'll rewrite it under here. Also, there's definitely not enough room here to draw all of my likes and dislikes. We need to condense this into a specific category. Let's go with desserts. Desserts I like and desserts I dislike. First, let's get both pages backgrounds laid out. For the desserts I like side, I'm using acrylic paint in a strawberry pink color. Hint, hint. Modifying the prompt with that same color. And on the desserts I dislike side, I'm painting the page a mint green. Hint, hint, hint. And same thing with the prompt. Now to get these prompts to read properly. Desserts, desserts. Oh yeah, and lists. Ah, looks so much better. Okay, now for the desserts. Let's start with the desserts I like, which, um, so many. But if I could narrow it down to my top three, it would probably be creme brulee, a rich sweet custard topped with a caramelized sugar crust, milkshakes, which is basically ice cream on the go, and cake. Soft, spongy, fluffy, moist cake. 
I opted to use my alcohol-based brush markers to color these in. Sometimes the colors look totally different when first applied versus when they dry. Just trust the process. Looks like I've chosen to make this a slice of yellow cake. Bouncing over to the creme brulee. In restaurants, it's usually served cold and topped with berries. I prefer to make it myself at home because it's so much better served warm. Milkshake time. I'm making it a strawberry shake as that is definitely my favorite flavor. Let's carry that pink over onto the cake frosting. I drew a layer cake, but you best believe I love cake in every form. Layer cake, cupcakes, cake pops, it's all good. And highlight. <laughs> Okay, so I wasn't super happy with the milkshake all finished, so I cut it out, redrew it, recolored it, and here it is. Much better. Let's move on to the desserts I dislike. First on the list is flan, or is it pronounced like flan? Meh. Another no-go for me would be mint chocolate chip ice cream. Quite honestly, it might be my least favorite of all. And lastly, pie. Please don't come after me if you're a diehard fan of any of these. Think of it this way, if ever we're in the same place and any of this is served, you can eat mine. So you're welcome. But I suppose I need to justify all of this. So I love ice cream, I like mint, and I love chocolate. But when all three are combined, some chemical reaction occurs, which I can only describe as a mouthplosion of unpleasantly epic proportions. I'm not a huge fan of the gelatin texture of flan, but I mostly hate that it has so little flavor. Flavorless jiggle swimming in juices. Blech. And I dislike all pies in general because I hate pie crust, but I also have disdain for most nuts. So I drew a pecan pie because that's like a double whammy major no-no dessert that I will never, ever, ever enjoy. Well, that felt like a rant. Sorry, let's lighten things up with some highlights. Get all of these cut out, like so, and glue them into the book. Now normally I Mod Podge before gluing, and some of you think that's really weird, but it's to minimize the wrinkling. With this one, I saved Mod Podge for last, and have major regrets now because it wrinkles so bad. But first, each of these desserts is going to need its own little label. Here we go with that Mod Podge. And oh, the wrinkles, the tragic, tragic wrinkles. <sighs> Sign and date. So here's the finished desserts I like page and the finished desserts I dislike page. Wrinkled as they may be, I think the spread looks super cute altogether. Alrighty, up next, create a music inspired page. Turn on some music, let the music inspire your decorations. So for this one, I opened my YouTube music page and the first suggested playlist was my late 90s, early 2000s pop playlist. Ah, oh, what a time for pop. Took me right back to the days of burning the dopest mix CDs your friends have ever heard. And they had to have a super dope title to match. Something like Summer Jams, Y2K. And for anyone wondering, yes, I am old enough to have been around for mixtapes. But by the time this prime pop era hit, well, we were pretty much moved on to CDs by then. Doing something a little different, using watercolor pencils on this one. This way I could be precise in coloring the prism pattern on the discs, but then use water to blend it out. Eh, the front and back sides are looking the same, which is all wrong. But it should be darker and more dull. So let's pull out the traditional watercolors and do a dark gray wash over the entire front of the CD. Okay, that looks much better. We can move on to the background now. I thought black would really make it pop, so I'm just filling that in with my trusty alcohol markers. And now for this wave of color coming off the back of the CD, we're gonna go with a pastelish rainbow. Now the CD title is looking a little washed out and hard to read. Let's darken that right up. Beautiful. Now for this other page, we're going to continue that rainbow wave and each color will be the name of a band or artist that I love in this category of music. First up, NSYNC. They are my all-time favorite pop artists. 
For this technique, I'm just blocking out the letters and rounding the edges to make this cute 90s-esque bubble font. As you can see, my second line belongs to the Spice Girls. Followed by the one, the only, Britney Spears. And the Backstreet Boys. <sighs> and Aaron Carter. R.I.P. And my guilty pleasure feels so lame for putting them on here, but I was obsessed with S Club 7. Carrying over that black background. Mod Podge it all. And juicy highlight time! Into the book with you! Gotta add a little flair to this prompt. More rainbow, anyone? Sign and date? Well, here it is, completed. From the CDs to the font, this prompt really took a long time to finish. But I just love how it came together. Whoop whoop! Last prompt of the week! Create a page of garbage. Draw, photograph, write, or attach a bunch of items that you regularly throw in the garbage. At the risk of sounding totally diva, I was just not very inspired by this prompt. I didn't want to scrapbook trash. I didn't even want to draw trash. But I figured if I drew a trash can scene, I'm still adhering to the prompt, right? So something I like to draw that you might find rummaging around in the trash can? A raccoon, aka the trash panda. I'm strictly gonna make this one a pencil sketch, no liner or color. I think the look is really gonna work for a trash theme, kind of messy and unfinished. So after my first couple of videos, I was asked why so many of my sketches are done off camera. The honest truth is there are two main reasons I don't sketch on camera. The first is of course time. Sketching takes a long time, there's a lot of erasing and redrawing involved. That would be a ton of extra footage to deal with. The second reason, convenience. Sketching off camera means I can do it whenever and wherever I find time, without having to set up a camera at my art table and worry about lighting and blah 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 blah. It seems like overall though, most people don't care about my off camera sketching, so that's good. But for that small percentage that want to see it, this one's for you. Rant over. Just working on the words. Now I wish I could say I created this cute panda font, but I didn't. Found it on the Google. Decided the background needed something. In my mind, I thought dabbing this brown paint would look like dirt smudges. Uh, nope. Definitely looks like poop. So let's cover some of it up with a little gray. Okay, that's actually really helping. Close call. Couple of tiny highlights. Mad Podge, sign and date. And here's our completed sketchy cute little trash panda. I'd say we sure turned trash into treasure with this one. <laughs> so to recap the work we did this week, we created a monochrome using only green watercolor and colored pencils to bring our lovely Marla the Mantis to life. We created two lists, desserts I like, milkshakes, cake, and creme brulee, as well as desserts I dislike, mint chip ice cream, flan, and pie. We created a music-inspired page with Summer Jam's Y2K, a sick mix CD featuring my favorite pop artists of that era. And lastly, we created a page of garbage with our cute little raccoon trash panda rummaging in the trash can. Comment below which page was your favorite this week. Mine was definitely Marla the Mantis. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course come back next week to see what I create next. Uh, goodbye!